let's move on to the last uh, talk of the session. So we have Itai Arad from, uh, talking about uh, area law for maximum limits ground states of local Hamiltonians. Okay, thank you. Um, so this is, uh, this is a joint work with uh, Raoul Jain from uh, CCQT in Singapore and uh, Raz Firanko from the Technion in Israel. Um, and I'm going to talk about uh, having area laws for maximum mixed states in ground spaces of, of gapped Hamiltonians. So since they don't have much time, let me just go uh, straight to... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was not there. Okay. Um, <laughs> so uh, let me just define the settings. So um, I'm considering a uh, Hamiltonian system defined on the lattice, the d-dimensional lattice, um, with the uh, qubits of dimension small d, and we have a, a local Hamiltonian defined on them, uh, K-local Hamiltonian. I assume that the, uh, the norm of the term is one, and um, I denote by E0, E1, et cetera, the uh, eigenvalues of, of H. These are the energies of it, and E0 is the ground energy, and H0 is the, is the eigenspace of all the, of all the, uh, of, of E0, which is all the ground, uh, ground states of H. And, um, and, and a major question that people ask, in particular in physics, is what is the entanglement structure of, of states in this, uh, in this eigenstate, uh, eigenspace? Um, so um, what, we, uh, what, what do we mean by that? So uh, a major, major uh, question people ask is, um, if I partition the, 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 the system into two parts, L and the rest of the system, how much entanglement do I have between these uh, these two parts, and to quantify that, one useful uh, quantity would be the the mutual information. So this is a well known formula for mutual information, and uh, and I can ask, okay, for a typical ground state uh, in such a system, how much how much uh, entanglement or how much uh, mutual information I have uh, across the system? And um, the idea is that in in, in physics, when, when we are talking about physical Hamiltonian, then many times in the ground state, uh, because the the ground state itself was is, is a ground state of a Hamiltonian that has a short range correlation, a short range interaction. This interaction, in some sense, many times when we go to the ground state, create only short range correlations, and and as a result, I'm hand waving a lot. Uh, there is a, a short range entanglement between different parts of the, of the, of the system. And therefore um, the entanglement in some, sort of, some sense is proportional to the boundary of the region on which we, we look. And this is, this is uh, manifested in the fact that the mutual information will scale as the, as the size of the boundary and not as the boundary itself. Unlike, uh, for example, random states where it will scale like the volume. So this is called an area law and this is called a volume law. And uh, it is a well-known conjecture uh, in physics, that if we look at ground states of, uh, of gapped, uh, of local Hamiltonians with a gap, this is a spectral gap. So we assume that the difference between the first energy and the, and the ground energy is constant and does not, uh, does not decay as the, as the size of the system increases. So once we have that, then it is, it is conjectured that the area low uh, is, is satisfied. Um, Okay, so uh, previous results about trying to prove this conjecture. So we have like a we have like a full proof of of, of, the, of this conjecture in one D, and all these proofs are for the for the case where there there is a, a unique ground state. Um, <clears throat> so Hastings uh, first proved it, and then uh, we had a work that kind of improved uh, on on Hastings uh, results. And for two D systems, we don't have a full proof yet. Um, all the proofs that we have are under additional assumptions, so there is a full a full list of these things. And um, in the case where we're not having a, a unique ground state, but we have several uh, <clears throat> ground states in the, in the ground space, then um, what we can, one thing that we, we know that in the cases where we have uh, an area law in, in the 1D and 2D, then we have this type of, uh, of, of result for the, uh, for the mutual information for all the ground states in, 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 in the ground space. So we see that we have some dependency on the, on the degeneracy of the ground space. The larger the ground space, then we don't expect that all of the guys sitting there will satisfy an area law, or they will satisfy an area law, but the quality will go down and down and it, uh, it will degrade. Um, so, um, and, and, and you can even, you know, you can even have a very simple toy model that shows you that, you know, in case that you have uh, 
an, an exponential degeneracy, then, then really you will find some states there uh, that don't have uh, any, any error alone. This is, this is intuitive. Okay, so what are we trying to prove? We're trying to show that in the case where you have many ground, ground states and you don't expect all of them to satisfy an area law, uh, there is one particular uh, state that all, will always satisfy an area law, and this is the maximum mixed state inside the ground space. Okay, so this is where what I'm going to show or to claim that we showed is that uh, if you look at this state, then it will satisfy an area law regardless of the underlying uh, degeneracy of the, of the ground space. And uh, the, the reason why this might be interesting is that, okay, this is, first, first of all, this is the most natural state in the ground space. This is a function of the Hamiltonian. Um, when T goes to zero, it is the limit of the Gibbs state. We heard about it like uh, two talks ago. And um, we know that there is an area law for the Gibbs state in the mutual information for constant temperature, but this, is, this thing is for, for the temperature going, uh, going to zero. Um, uh, and also, it might be relevant for cases where we don't really have a lot of degeneracy, but we have a lot of, of, of other uh, low energy state that creates like a continuum of, of, uh, of excitations, then it might be generalized uh, to this case. And uh, also, in, in the end, it is, it is proportional to the, to the projector of the ground space. And then it might be useful, actually, as, as, a, as a mathematical tool for proving the error law for higher dimensional systems. We can slice the system in, 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 in parts, and then in each part, we can, might be able to use this result as a structural um, lemma about the, about the projector in, in that size. So it, it might be a, a useful tool for the future. OK, so uh, how much time do I have? OK, so, uh, <clears throat> so in the rest of the talk, what I want to do, I want to try to explain a little bit of the, of, of the proof. The proof is, is technical, so uh, I can't really explain it all. Uh, but I'll try to give you a background about the, uh, the framework in which we, we prove it, uh, and, and a formal statement of the result, and then uh, some, some idea of, of, of how it goes. OK, so um, <clears throat> the, the framework in which we use to prove it is called the, the AGSP framework. AGSP stands for Approximate Ground Space Projector. And this is an operator that approximates, as its, its name uh, hints, the, the projector into, uh, into the ground space. So it is an operator K that what it does, essentially, it, it takes any, any guy inside the ground space and it preserves it, just like the projector into it. But instead of killing everyone out with, with, that is perpendicular to the ground space, it just shrinks them. Okay, so it shrinks them by some factor delta. Okay, that's why it's not an exact projector; it's just an approximate projector. But in turn, we also it, it might also have this structural uh, uh, property, which uh, it does not create too much entanglement. I can I can write it down as a product. As a, as a sum of, of D product uh, uh, operators. And therefore, the, the Schmidt rank of this operator is, is limited by D. And if I apply it on some state, it does not increase the entanglement by too much. Okay. Um, and a good AGSP is an AGSP in which uh, there is a favorable, favorable uh, trade off between these two guys. Okay. So the product of D squared times delta is, is smaller than, than one half. And why is that important? It is important because. Um, <clears throat> We have a, uh, the general. We have a general result for for cases where uh, we have a unique ground state, and the general result says that if you have, if you manage somehow to construct a good AGSP, you manage to prove an area law. Okay, and the intuition is is, is kind of simple. Okay, the intuition is is, is um, the intuition is, is I mean, it, it comes from this uh, from from this lemma. It is the bootstrapping lemma. It says that if you have a good AGSP then what it means, it means that you have some product state with a large overlap with the ground state. And if you have a large overlap with the ground state, then you can start with this product state, apply the AGSP, not too many times because you're already kind of close to it, and then you will reach a very good approximation of the ground space. And since you did not do too many steps, you did not create too much entanglement, and therefore it means that the ground state has, a, has an area loss. That's more or less the philosophy of, of proving area loss using uh, this framework. Um, okay, uh, <clears throat> so uh, using these frameworks, you know, we were able to prove, uh, we were able to construct good AGSP in 1D case and in 2D case under, uh, under extra conditions, and, and, and hence these results uh, followed. 
Okay, so the uh, so this is the AGSP framework that I'm, go I'm going to use. The other uh, ingredient, technical ingredient that we're going to use is the uh, maxim maxim uh, maxim maximal information, um, which is some sort which is uh, <clears throat> some sort of a measure of a, of a measure to to quantify uh, the amount of information in, in in quantum states. So to define it, let's recall uh, what is the um, uh, Relative entropy, uh, relative entropy of the state is is is, is given by uh, by this formula, and it's again it can be seen a little bit as a distance between rho and sigma. And um, <laughs> using the relative ent ent uh, inf entropy, we can uh, define the mutual information uh, of a state with respect to some bipartition of the system using this formula. And it can also be written as 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 this expression as the minimum of. of of overall, uh, the minimal distance according to this measure between all states and 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 and, and the product states uh, according to a, a given partition. So this is the this is the definition of the of the relative uh, entropy. The maximal uh, relative entropy is defined by this uh, by this formula. What we are doing, we are um, <clears throat> given a state rho and another state sigma, such that the support of rho is inside the support of sigma. We are looking for the Minimal t such that rho is smaller than t times sigma. Okay, and once we have that, we take the log, and this is this is the the d max. And uh, the intuition is that if 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 we have this, if if rho is is only slightly, we if we have to multiply just by one plus delta, then actually uh, rho and sigma are, are pretty close to each other. So this is like a, a good uh, some sort of a, a distance measure, and 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 then using this this. Um, uh, relative max relative ent from, uh, entropy, we can define the the maximal mutual information simply like we define it here. So it will be the the best uh, the the best product state that we can get that will give us the minimal distance with respect to that measure. Okay, so so this is the uh, uh, <clears throat> the the definition, and um, one more one more uh, another slight definition that we have is the epsilon. Uh, I max. The epsilon I max is uh, is is the is the <clears throat> is the best thing that we can get if we are looking at a ball of size epsilon around rho. So what does it mean? It means that I'm I have some sort of a bipartition of the system. I will look for anything which is close to rho where this I max with respect to that rho and that bipartition of the system will be uh, will be will be minimal. Okay. That so that's uh, that's the uh, uh, the definition, and, and and the idea is that uh, because IMAX is, is is a very uh, non continuous quantity, it's very hard to work with it uh, analytically, and so that's why we we introduce uh, IMAX. And there is the this fact here that relates IMAX to the 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 well known uh, mutual information, and, and it says that it is upper bounded by by this formula, and as a result, if I'm taking epsilon to be one over L. And I have a bound on I max. It will give me an upper bound, uh, an upper bound of, on uh, <clears throat> on I. So th this will be uh, my uh, the way I would proceed. Okay. So now I can I, I can uh, state the main result. The main result says that uh, if we have a, a local Hamiltonian and uh, we have some bipartition of this local Hamiltonian to L and the rest of the system. And suppose, you know, God has given us uh, this nice AGSP with D squared times delta smaller than one half, then um, the, the epsilon uh, maximal mutual information satisfies this, uh, this bound, okay? So it is bounded by log D of the D, the parameter of the AGSP plus, uh, plus this thing and uh, taking epsilon to be one over L then immediately, and using the previous uh, the previous uh, continuity uh, result, then gi give us straightforwardly um, an area law on the mutual information. Okay, so so this this is what we want to prove, and 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 in some sense, this is the equivalent of the bootstrapping lemma that we had before for the unique for the unique state. But this but this time it is it, it is for the maximum unique state. Um, Okay, and then in, in addition, okay, so you know, if we if we plug the uh, the previous construction for for the AGSP that we had for one D and two D, then we get area law for for these cases where we have high degeneracy. And in addition, we can it, we can show that it also implies an in one D at least an efficient tensor network representation of the of the MPO that represents the maximally uh, mixed state. 
Okay, so um, the proof, so, okay, I have like uh, five minutes. All right, so I'll, I'll try to give some, some hint of, 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 uh, of how the proof works. Um, so let's try first a, a, a Pussman uh, bootstrapping idea. So recall that the, uh, that I max is given by this formula. So let us start by, uh, with, the best, with the best product that we have. So call it sigma L and sigma L uh, complement. And, and, and then T will be uh, this thing. Um, so we have this, let's start by definition, we have this inequality and now we can, uh, we can apply a, a good AGSP on both sides, we will get this thing, and this is this is not a normalized state, so we can now normalize it, taking out the trace, and we will have some normalized state here. And the idea is now that because um, because K was a, an operator that does not create too much entanglement, and we applied it here on a product state, then this sigma hat will not be will not have too many guys there. It will not have too much entanglement there, and as a result, it's not too hard to to see that. There is some product state that you take out of the expansion of, of, of sigma hat, and, um, <clears throat> and 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 then you can, you can upper bound it by some d squared time time this this product state, and altogether if you plug it here, you will get this expression. Um, <clears throat> now now we use the fact that we started from the from the guys that were already the best, the optimal, and we are and we and we reached yet again another bound on 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 uh, the grass space with respect to some product state. And then this means that all of this expression here must be smaller than T because T was the optimal. Um, <clears throat> so, so as a result, we get this, this, this inequality, we, we take off uh, T and we get this thing. And now um, <clears throat> we can now work on what is, what is written here. So we expand this product state. We, we, we expand it into a part which is in the ground space and a part that is perpendicular to the ground space. And, um, and taking the trace, now because this is an AGSP, then actually if we have the ground space here, it, it can be absorbed into the projector, to the actual projector. So just have this. And here, since we are now perpendicular to the ground space and we are acting with K, so remember K what it does when it, when it hits something which is perpendicular to the ground space, it shrinks it by, by some delta. So altogether, we get we get uh, this this uh, this expression, and and now using the fact that d squared times delta is smaller than one half, after some simple algebra, we finally get that the overlap of the of of, of this product state with a grass uh, state projector is upper bounded by some by some uh, constant that depends on d. So this is already a nice thing. It, it tells you that there is. A product state that has a non-trivial overlap with the with the ground space uh, projector, but it's not it's not sufficient. Um, <clears throat> uh, it's not sufficient. Uh, we first of all we wanted a, a bound on T, but we got a bound on on the overlap, which is I mean, and also the fact that we uh, that we get some state that has an, a, a nice overlap with the with the ground space doesn't mean that it will give us in the end. An area law for the maximum mixed state. Remember, we wanted the maximum mixed state. So, if if this guy is, for example, just a, a pure state, and we apply the we apply uh, the AGSP on it, we we will end up in a in in a, again in a pure state. I mean, it will be just the the action of the ground space projector on this pure state, which, which will also give us a pure state. So, this is this is definitely not the maximum mixed state. So, this is not uh, strong enough. Uh, and the idea that we have in order to uh, to overcome that is, but some somehow what we wanted to to do is to work with flat states. Now flat states are, are a mixed state in which the weight of all in, of, of all the um, eigen of all the of all of their eigenstates is equal. Okay, so these are in some sense proportional to projectors. And um, if we had a flat state, if this sigma sigma were uh, were flat state, then actually you you can show that. There is a simple relation between the d max and the overlap, and therefore, since we had a, a, a bound for the overlap, that will give us a, a straightaway a bound for for d max. Um, and the question is how to how to how to get that. And this is the second uh, uh, <clears throat> new ingredient in, in the proof, and we are using a technique uh, pioneered by uh, 
Raoul and then Anwar, Raoul Jain and Anwar Ganshu, which is called the brother extension. And the idea of the brother extension is that you can take arbitrary states that are not flat, they have different eigenvalues, and then you extend it to an auxiliary Hilbert space um, <clears throat> in which they appear completely flat. And, and the way you do it is that, first of all, you assume that the, the eigenspaces are rational, and uh, if they are not, then you approximate it by something which is rational. And then, you know, if you have one eigenstate that, uh, that its size is, for example, uh, 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 three over six, then it will appear in, in the, it will <coughs> appear as a, pro, as, a, as a tensor product with three guys in the, in the brother space. Now, when you trace out the external space, you will get back this state. And then the idea is to somehow work with the proof in this, in this state where everything is flat. And when everything is flat, there is a very natural connection between the overlap and, and, uh, and, and the IMAX. So this is the, uh, the, the road that we, we follow. And I don't have time to go over it, but in the end we get, uh, we apply a certain argument in an iterative uh, manner. We always uh, get some product states uh, that are, uh, uh, <clears throat> That satisfy this uh, this condition, and uh, <clears throat> using using the brother extension, we can relate their uh, we can relate their overlap with the ground space with the uh, with their I max, and um, and in the end uh, uh, we get uh, we get the uh, the result we need. Okay, so let me uh, let me summarize here. So uh, what we managed to to accomplish is to find a bootstrapping lemma for the maximally a mixed state in the in the ground state, uh, provided that we have a good AGSP, um, <clears throat> it gives us automatically area loads for these highly degenerate cases in 1D and 2D. I mean, places where we already had uh, such constructions of AGSP. It also gives a, an efficient tensor network representation uh, in 1D at least, as an MPO. And um, some open question is there. First of all, for me personally, is there a simple proof? Uh, the proof is, in my taste, too complicated and, and Maybe there is some combinatorial proof that uh, that can be found, um, <clears throat> and then you know we know that the Gibbs state, as going back to the Gibbs state, we know that it has a an area law uh, if it is on, on, a, on a local lattice uh, for any finite temperature, and this result shows it also has an area law for for zero temperature. That then then can we somehow uh, the, will this imply that there is an area law all along the way? That's uh, I think uh, an interesting question. And um, and the other thing, uh, which is more technical, but maybe we can, maybe because actually what we are, we are giving some structural property of the maximum mixed state, which is proportional to the projector on the ground space. So maybe we can use this, uh, these properties to, uh, to try and to, to uh, in some sort, of, some sort of bootstrap this, the, the proof of the area law from 1D to 2D to 2D to 3D, etc. cetera. Um, so, this is it. Thank you. Questions? Thanks for the talk. So one question. So you said that you get an efficient uh, MPO representation, but uh, can you actually find it efficiently or uh, is it just like an existence result? It's an existence result, but I suspect that in 1D, just like we have uh, proof that in the unique case, you can also find this thing, uh, the tensor network representation efficiently, then sh it should be also possible in this case. That's my guess. I see, but there's no like- No proof. No, okay. Can you comment a bit? Uh, why do you think, uh, yeah, why do you think that it helps for uh, having AGSPs in higher dimension? Like, wh what's uh, can uh, you know? okay? Sorry. Yeah. So the thing is that you know. Assume that you have this result in 1D and you're looking at the frustration-free case. So you might attempt to prove the, uh, the area law in 2D by, you know, you, you want to show that the, you have a bounded entanglement between this side and that side. So might, you might want to somehow construct an AGSP that has, uh, that, you know, has low, a low Schmidt rank between this side and that side. So, so this result kind of tells you, okay, look, you can take 
the projector on this on this row, the projector to the ground space on this uh, on 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 on, uh, on this row. You know that because it is a frustration-free Hamiltonian, then the degeneracy of this Hamiltonian here is exponential. But still, if you look at the projector here, then because of what we proved, it has a, it, it can be well approximated by a low Schmidt rank projector. So then maybe if you have um, if you're taking all the all the rows here and you look at all their projection, then you can somehow argue. That you know, using a you, you stack them up one against it, the other. That the all together they do not create too much entanglement. So it, it's just like a general direction. I don't have a proof of that sort, but I think it might be possible. Further questions? If not, let's thank Ita again.